And welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My host, I'm, I'm your host. My guest this afternoon is radio personality and all, all around great guy, Steve Savino from AM 1220 hey. WQN. Steve, welcome. How are you? Pete, thanks for having me. A pleasure to be back on the show. I know. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for coming down. And for those of our viewers and listeners that don't know who Steve Savino is, I guess, who is Steve Savino? That's a good question. I just want to say I love the new studios. Thank you. I love it. love it. Thank um, you. Well, I've been in radio for over 30 years, right. uh, on and off, uh, for the most part, 30 years. Mm -hmm. My young, I'm still young. Yeah. Uh, but I've worked at uh, AM 1220 WQN mm -hmm. for around 11, 11 years, right. which is a great community radio station. It is. It serves the community. I love the philosophy. It's owned by Quinnipiac University. Yeah. And the, the, the mission is to serve the public, serve the, the immediate area, what the mission is radio stations are supposed to be. Right. Some of the stations that you might listen to might have lost that mission, but I'm just pr privileged to work at the outlet that, uh, that allows us to serve the community. Mm -hmm. and, but I, like I said, I'm an assistant GM, general manager. Yeah. Uh, the general manager is Ray Andrewson, who's been with the station, um, I said, almost two decades. Yeah. Two decades. And that's an anomaly in our industry. It is. To be at one, loca one station. Right. You know, you had the Bob Steels of, of certain generations, but those longevity at stations is unheard of. Um, you know, Ray, you had Maria Phillips on your program a few I weeks did. ago. I did. Maria was on not long ago. And she's also been in the industry, again, we have 30 yeah. years. Most of us seriously have around 30 years experience right. that work at AM 1220. And then there's your morning news guy who's been around and around and around and around yes. and around. Yes. <laughs> it is a small, and our industry is such a small it is. Like a world. It is. Uh, we worked at a few stations together, ATO. BIS in Bristol, um, but Greg, yeah, Greg's been also a component of the station. I think almost as close to the same years as Ray has been. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Great. It's a great, it's a, a great uh, professional, and it's just a pleasure to come up. You don't mind waking up no. each day going to work. No, definitely not. And I and I know for you're also the afternoon guy at the station as well, and you've interviewed lo probably local mayors, local first selectmen, local community leaders. Yes, and that's what I love about the job. It's it, talking to the community leaders. Yep. Like today, we interviewed Hamden Mayor Kurt Lang. Yeah, sure. And, and uh, Kathy McShane, who from the opposite uh, business side, Ladies Launch mm -hmm. for uh, local entrepreneurs. And then this week, uh, Dean Koontz, yep. uh, you know, national authors. Yep. And then coming up this week, we'll talk to some of the folks from Channel 3 and Channel 8. Uh, it, it's the it's a full service type magazine, which I love that aspect of part of the job. It is. And we give stuff away. It's a full service type of magazine. I, I lo I've always loved the full service stations. Yeah, exactly. Traffic, weather, you exactly. know the gamut. Yes. I was going to say you've even you've even interviewed me. Even Pete Mazzetti. I was, I was a say. tough booking. I just don't know how <laughs> we were able to lock it in. But that's what I said. I love the balance of it. The local. Right. And you know, if you call other stations, well, yeah, we'll get back to you. Hold your breath. But that's what <laughs> yeah, I love right. about. Uh, the, uh, AM 1220 is that we're able to do the local and the national a nice little balance exactly exactly now obviously you've been you've, you've been around the radio business a while how has it changed well it continues to change each and every month <laughs> it by, by tomorrow it's going to keep on changing but you have to evolve and you adapt mm -hmm. and the way you know the the technology the way it's changing it's becoming more mobile and people want it on their schedule you know, again, they even though my show is, like, say, from four to six, mm -hmm. you know, people would say, "Oh, I missed it." Is there some of the segments that we can archive and play at my at my schedule? I want it on my time, not right. on your time. And I used to work for Netflix back in the day, when they first started. I was uh, really? a designer for some of the website components and wow. some of the marketing end of it. And we knew demand would be, um, again, prevalent, mm -hmm. not to this degree, as original content producers. You know what? We'll be right back after a short break.
will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Eddie Show. My guest is Steve Savino, General Manager from Mayor 1220 WQN. Steve, welcome back. Welcome. It's good to be back. Good How to be back. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about on-demand yeah, products. that's right. So, as I said, the audience wants on-demand on their schedule. Like I said, okay. when I worked at that company, Netflix, mm -hmm. we knew on-demand would be a big portion of the consumer down the road. But down to this degree, I didn't foresee original content. Right. Uh, you're saying people are you know, cutting the cord, so right. you have to adapt. What's the consumer want? You provide the content. And that's what I think will be, like with radio, traditional radio, mm -hmm. will be content producers. Right. Now, as far as... With the station, you guys are obviously a full service, full service yeah. station, so you guys have a full news department. And that's the one thing, again, with a, the jewel, one of the jewels of the radio station is our news component. Okay. You know, we have reporters, anchors that are actually in our studios, not at some remote location in Lapland, but right. they're actually on the base of the Sleeping John, Route 10. You know, whether it be yep. covering events, planning and zoning, news, news events, press re press events, there are anchors, reporters are there in the studio, and they're covering out in the street, coming back, gathering audio, producing it, and packaging it up. Now, who are some of the notable anchors that you guys have in the AM twelve twenty WQN news department? AP award winning. Uh, you know, we have uh, Laura Cannon. We yep. have uh, sure. Jackie Lopper, who fills in for me. Uh, Bob Hancock, who has also been in the industry on ABC in New York. Mm -hmm. um, from you know, we've had uh, a lot of folks. Eric Malapodi, who's worked at now working at CNN. Oh, all right. Marcy Izzard, who is now an author and producing a album. It's just amazing. Really, the amount of talent that goes through the 1220 studios. Exactly. And that's why I so we mix academia, apply what you have at QUN, mm -hmm. the transition to TV is so much easier. It is. Yeah, because it it's is. like, I suppose, when you can write for radio, it's like I equate that to Latin. So if you master writing for radio news, the transition to TV is so much easier. It is, it is. Yeah. Now what is a normal day doing radio in the life of Steve Savino like? It, you know, it's almost like 24-7, like yourself, Pete. I'm sure it's like non, non, no, it's not, it's non -stop. It is non -stop. After we're done here, I think, you know, after we do our uh, yep. salutations, got to go back to the studio, produce some commercials, yep. uh, look at the schedule, then we'll look at um, the IT part of it, because I also, we we'll also handle the automation right. uh, of the radio station, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's like non-stop. You know, you're, you know you have a career, if it's not nine to five, if it's past nine to five, it's a career. Exactly. It's, it's non-stop, but, but I enjoy it. I was um, gonna say, you love what you do. And it's never the same, it's never symmetric. No. I'm sure as you know. You're, oh, totally. No day is the same, and the people that you get to come in contact with, that to me is like, again, the price is part of the job and the mentoring aspect exactly. of the job. So if I could say, if I tell you each day is typical, what day is typical, it's no day is the same, which I love. Now, as far as the station philosophy goes, what is it? The philosophy is, once again, is to serve the community. So we're, again, we are a component to provide information to right. the surrounding area. Uh, one of our slogans is great music and local news. That's mm -hmm. one of our slogans. We provide, we do provide entertainment. Right. We do provide information. And we do have a window for the community to get their message being served as well, to serve, get their message on a platform that other outlets, like I said, turn their back on. Really? Yeah. I think if you, for the most part, you see a lot of these outlets not trying to, downgrade or throw uh, other right. outlets under the bus. Exactly. But we try to give a platform to outlets that normally don't have a budget for marketing, right. for nonprofits mm -hmm. especially. We have an open you know, window that, hey, here's a platform for you to broadcast on. Exactly. And that's what I, that's again, another, another jewel of the station is again, to serve the community. And that's mm -hmm. what the philosophy one, the broadcast, the FCC regulation was to serve certain parts of the community. And that's what we're still doing. Now, I'm sure over your years you've interviewed a lot of people. Do you have a favorite? Well, it all depends on the day. All the, I just I pulled out an interview with J.J. Abrams, the director of Star Wars. Really? Uh, it's an art interview we did years back. So in release of Star Wars, I think I'm going to pull it up from the archives. Okay. And, but uh, from Mel Blanc to mm -hmm. uh, the voice of Rocky, you name it. But then also some of the politicians, Bob Hope. Yep. Um, you name it. And, and it, but each day you say, wait a minute, you listen to it again and say, what a conversation. Exactly. But it's sometimes, it's some of the local, uh, the Greater New Haven Community Chorus stands out because of mm -hmm. what they serve. They're a non-audition chorus. Yep. 
and building a community one note at a time, which I just love. It's just that, you know, everyone's welcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can you imagine, and of course, one voice being the same, how boring that would be? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, depending on what day, time of day it is, it, I, I could change my mind, oh, this was an interview. But my favorite go-to guest was um, an actor that we know, I won't name names. Okay. I had a list, I tried to produce him, I said, listen, I'd love to get you on my talk show, we're in, Hart we're in Connecticut, can you get you on? He goes, what? I woke him up, someone gave me his number, I said, I, I thought this was your PR office, and he says, I'd like to have you on our show. He goes, you're a producer of what? He hangs up the phone, he goes, produce this. It's one who puts on a facade of like he's all home and caring and loving, but he's yeah. He was not or he didn't take too kindly to my phone call. Oh God, no. But those, but those right. are the stories you. Right, exactly. Those, they happen. Yeah. They, over a couple of cocktails, you say, "Hey, this is, these are what legends is made up." I'll, I'll tell you his name during the break. All right. Wow, it's that's pretty, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Now, as far as is there someone that you haven't had a chance to interview that you want to interview? Oh well, you, you, geez, I'd love to. Donald Trump many years ago when he was plugging, I think it was who wants uh, his his show on NBC. Mm -hmm. But now this is before he entered his hat in the political arena. Right. I'd love to have you know, but he makes himself accessible. He yes, gets he it. does. And as you will know, a politician should make. Of course, he's not a politician yet. Politicians who serve public office should make time for the public. Definitely. Doing interviews on your show right. and radio shows. If you, as I talk with other guests, saying, hey, you're giving me an outlet. I should show you the respect of you know, taking advantage of that service. Now, as far as, I, from what I understand by doing some homework, you guys have a new mayor in the town of Hamden. Yes. What's he like? Fantastic. I mean, we just had him on, like I said, we had interviewed Kurt Lang today. Okay. Uh, we'll have a conversation coming up midweek. Okay. And once again, very approachable, right. like the previous Mayor Meyer, Scott Jackson. Definitely. That's the way the elected official should be. Exactly. Totally. No, it's a very, Scott, I, I, I've actually interviewed former Mayor Jackson. He's, he's been on with me a couple times talking about when he was chairman of the Sandy Hook Advisory Commission. And as you well know, like I said, it, I think the anniversary was this week, so yes. uh, you never forget. And I'm sure, uh, like I said, it's, it, I really admire his service that he gave to the area. Exactly. No, on that a, committee. No, he was a, re, he was a really, nice, really, good, really good guy. And who's your favorite? I mean, guess that actually, you... Actually, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do, okay. do, do that during the second half. We're going to sort of flip the, flip the table. Sure. You're going you're gonna to ask me a couple of questions. I about, love it. But other people that I've had a chance to interview, and so we're gonna looking forward to it. The second segment, we're gonna flip the tables a little bit, and Steve's gonna interview me and ask me a couple of questions. Sounds good. And as far as if people want, what, what would, I guess, what would they get from listening to your show in the afternoon? You know, I'd hope they take away some informational component, informational component that yeah. said I learned something today. That's if they take That's away. It. I love that they learned something. I didn't know that. Right. They take that component away. I've done the job. And that's why I'm saying, hey, it's you know, you know, try to put myself in the in the uh, legs of, in the uh, position of a consumer. Right. Whether it's he or she, I'm hopefully this information we're passing along to you, we grab something today that I didn't know. All right. Steve Savino, would you mind sticking around for another segment? I. You know what? Sounds huh. like a great idea. I, it does sound like a great idea. We'll be right back. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. It was not. It was like. Oh. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Sitting here with Steve Savino from AM 1220 WQN. Steve, welcome back. Well, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. And actually, what we're going to do for the opening of this segment, we're going to flip the tables a little. Steve Savino is going to interview me. Pete Mazzetti. Going to interview Pete Mazzetti. Are we set? Oh, we're kosher over there. I don't know if I'm ready for it, but Pete, let me ask you this. <laughs> yes. Let me ask you this. Who was, who's your guest that you'd love to get on your show right that you haven't interviewed yet? 
I would have to say my all-time favorite guest would probably be probably one probably Donald Trump or Ben Carson, one of the political local local politicals. And I think you've answered this before, but he's yes. a great uh, asset to the state. I think Dr. Henry Lee, that you've one of your favorite guests. Oh yeah, I've I've interviewed I've interviewed Dr. Lee a couple times on the both on this platform and on one of the other plat platforms I'm involved with. Okay, so now that so your favorite guest. Now, what's your favorite topic when you cover the when the Pete Mazzetti produces a show? Yeah, what's his concept? Uh, concept is little little bit of everything as far as the way way everything goes out. Pete Mazzetti cover Pete Mazzetti is like a covers a broad spectrum of things. He covers politics, he look, covers, but he loves to cover local community stuff and the stuff that goes on in the community. But what made Pete Mazzetti take this path to host the Pete Mazzetti show? What was somewhere when you were in high school? Actually, no, this is, a, this is actually a pretty, pretty neat story about the way, the way this happened, was the, when, when, I first, when I first started taping with Comcast in Clinton, when we did this, the, I stopped by the public access studio to drop something off. The public access coordinator at the time says to me, hey, do you realize every other shoreline town has a local public access show but the town of Clinton? I'm like, no. And I, at the time, I was going to meet with the former first selectman of the town at the time. And I happened to mention to him, I'm like, Hey, I was just over at Comcast dropping something off, and the public access coordinator mentions to me that the every other town has a short, every other town on the shoreline has a public access show, but Clinton. First selectman walks around from his desk, puts his arm on my shoulder, shakes my hand. Congratulations, it's now yours. It's now yours. And how many years has the show been on? <laughs> it, it, well, I've been, I was with Comcast in Clinton for about 13 or 14 years, and with Valley Shore, I've been here, I've been taping here about two. So producing it, people think you just walk in, like you and I just walk in, but there's more to it right. than just oh. walking in. You have a great, fantastic crew that you yeah, work with totally. and coordinate everything. So your totally. your daily, as you talked about my daily routine, right. your daily routine is not the same. No, God, no. My da my no, my daily my daily routine, when like if I'm ta if, if I'm taping on a, I t usually tape my shows on Mondays. Mm -hmm. If I tape my show on a Monday, I'm usually in my home office. Sunday afternoons, doing paperwork, writing, writing scripts, getting some no, getting some notes done, doing some last research on my guest. So, so it's a con like I said, it's twenty four seven. Yeah, it is twenty four seven. And then you know you're thinking of new concept. Where do you want to take the show? Let's say, where do you see the Pete Mazzetti show down the road and in a few years with the you know the uh, mobile co communications and right. wireless? Right. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Because wh where I'd have to say where I see. The Pete Mazzetti show over the next couple of years is not only doing what I what I'm doing here, but also reaching out, doing stuff on other media platforms where people can like you listen on sure. their schedule. Even though if I'm not on the air, they can punch up punch something up on as far yeah. as a podcast or a YouTube feed, as far as that goes. So it would be worldwide, you know, forget that other guy who's the king of all media, it's gonna be Pete right. Mazzetti, he's gonna be the, Ex the king of all media. Exactly. Well, when we are at the station, we're able to start public service campaigns and, and, and charity events. Right. I'm sure you're also involved with numerous charity events, am I, I correct? I am. I was gonna, yeah. I, I was gonna say one, one, of the, one of the biggest charity events that I'm involved with, I'm the communications director for Literacy Volunteers Valley Shore, which are, Literacy offices are about three minutes up the street from where we're taping right now. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So it's the give back. That's mm -hmm. the part of the, the communication aspect of it, being a journalist and, right. a, and an interviewer. That's the nice thing about delivering the message that conveys to the community how they find out about this is that you're one of those key components. Exactly. And what made you, now like I said, now I know you have that mission, but you know, it's the, the serving the community. I know you talk with some of the officials. What about Pete Mazzetti with a political office or a no, no. no. I've, I've actually, I've, I've actually been in. I've been. My mom, my mom was tax collector in the town of Clinton from 1987 to the mid 90s, and then she, when she left Clinton, the tax collector that, that she replaced in Clinton went to Guilford, 
and so she was in Guilford for 12 or 14 years and she recently retired. So I've been son of an elected official since 1987 and I've seen all of the <laughs> background of, of politics and campaigns and I used to be used to be very active in the political circuit, but I, I, after, after this cycle, I just said to everybody, I'm like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm just gonna worry about, I'm just gonna focus on TV, radio, and basically marketing in the show and marketing. Yeah, yeah, because you, you, we mentioned 24 seven elected officials, mm -hmm. you know, talk with Mayor Kurt Lang and mm -hmm. Scott Jackson, they're on call. Oh, totally. When they're in the area, even when they're grabbing a bite to eat, let's say they're out with their child. Right. Uh, you know, they're on, someone's going to probably bother them or having lunch in the area, so it's 24 7. Oh, totally. And as you talk about radio, TV, because you're uh, covering radio, TV, mm -hmm. what made you decide to take the Pete Mazzetti show on the audio side of it? Uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was actually approached by a couple of different media outlets to take the Pete Mazzetti show on the audio side of it, and it's a lot of, a lot of fun. It's a lot, lot, lot of fun. Little, little bit more work, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. So it's, Pete, it's like Pete Mazzetti. Pete Mazzetti is all, <laughs> all, 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 all over the place. But it's also you have a nice support staff. That oh yeah, totally. Think that. Totally. And I mean, so you know, when do you meet? I mean, uh, people don't realize Pete Mazzetti show doesn't just evolve and happen. Mm -mm. But the, besides your crew, when do you meet? Like once a week, twice a week? About, usually about once a week. Once a week. Usually. So what about, what about planning stages? See, we're always talking about the Pete Mazzetti show. I right. only got too centric, but I'm just saying. That's okay. For, for the planning aspect of it, well, do you disagree to some of your crew? Hey, Pete, maybe we should go take a left or take a right. Yeah, they're, pre they're, pretty, they're pretty good about s suggesting things and other other things going on, but but it's a love love what you've done with the set. It's, I do, but I, but it's amazing to see you've been doing it. Is the passion that comes through when we watch the shows? It's the it passion is. that comes through. It and, is and the drive and your drive exactly. And the other thing is, like I said, no, like we talked about Don Roach, long term mm -hmm. Pete Mazzetti, long term, long term Pete. Well, let's see, long term Pete Mazzetti, long term Pete Mazzetti is going to continue to do the show because he loves because. He loves what he does, and hopefully, get all the words spread out on what's going on in the local community. And that's the mission. That's isn't it? It great? is. We have that it mission. is. Uh, it's a public service, mm -hmm. uh, an uh, informational component, yeah. uh, taking away and, and and also giving back to the community. That's what it's all about. Exactly. No, it's totally. That's definitely what it's all about. And that, but also, I, hmm. I see the roster of guests that you had on. <laughs> and are, are there some guests that you've had on? We've had these had right. these guests that you've booked, you couldn't wait to interview, and then all of a sudden it just went south. Uh, yeah, I interviewed someone, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mention names. I, interview, I interviewed someone from a local nonprofit not long ago for one of the other platforms of the show. She was in the, she was on the communication side of things for the, for the organization. It's a, the irony, I love that. And <laughs> she, all, she, all she did was for the whole duration of the interview, one word answers. Oh, one that. word answers for a half hour. Mommy told you about those days. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I finally said to her during I said to her during one of the commercial breaks, I'm like, you might wanna elaborate a little on a one word <laughs> answer with me. She's like, I'm nervous. I'm like, you're nervous, that's fine. I'm like, we have to a little you gotta elaborate just a little bit, stretch things out a little because Oh, Pete does any put me at ease, you know. I just exactly. Just say, yeah, and you know, the carafes, <laughs> wine flowing. <laughs> Oh, it's just a beautiful thing as they come in the studios. No, it's a very welcoming atmosphere. We do like that. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying it's a yeah. nice, the components like your shows like uh, myself and your right. show on TV is that you, does Denise DeCenzo going to call me up and say, hey, Steve, let's go on the 530 News? No. But people miss it. You, give us, you give us a platform. Exactly. And it's nice to talk about the components that are involved. Like in Southern Connecticut, there's... There's so much out there. Oh, there's everything out yeah. there, especially down in the, yeah, and, down in this area. Yeah, you know, it's once again, it's you wonder why the state doesn't really. I don't want that's a topic for another show. I don't want to talk right. to you as we're interviewing Pete Mazzetti. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's you know again, how can Connecticut capitalize on so much, on so much that they don't magnify? That's yeah. a that's a topic for another day. That is a topic. That is a topic for another afternoon. 
I had one of the individuals that you talked with before, Jim Amon, mm -hmm. who's also, sure. oh, yeah, tell uh, the, once again, knows the resources that we have here and how can we capitalize it and make Connecticut a mecca, like say for the Hollywood, Hollywood industry. Right. Because um, there's so many talented artisans that we deal with on a daily basis that we're in communications with. Well, you know. Oh. You're falling apart. That's falling okay. Up. Let's keep talking about it. I'm fall, falling apart the scene. What do I know about? Um, you know, with the artisans that you deal with. Uh -huh. I, and I apologize for That's the okay. sound effects at the beginning while I put my microphone back. That's okay. Uh, but the artisans that you contend with, I'm dealing with like the writers, writers producers, yep. directors. There's, a, again, we, we've got a, we, we do have a population that's affected sort of the entertainment industry, oh, art totally. industry. So I guess some of your favorite components of that industry, because you work with Jim Amon. Yep. Uh, with some of the films that, be, that mm -hmm. were done here in right. Connecticut. Right. I'd have, to, I'd have to say Jimmy Amon is probably one of the most affluent people that I've had a chance to work with, and he's very supportive of the show. And very, as a matter of fact, I interviewed Jimmy not long ago, and he was he's he's like I'd, he's like I'd love to come on any 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 time that we any, anytime you want to come on with me, I'd love to love to be back on with you. And, and he, but he's another resource. Too, oh yeah, totally. Uh, that really does help capitalize on the resources here in Connecticut. Right. And I know you've worked with him for how many years? You worked with Jim? Yeah, I worked with Jim. I worked with Jim a lot. I, I was involved with Jim when he was Speaker of the House. Yeah, so. and I miss him at the Capitol. Yeah. I do miss him at the Capitol. Um, I feel like we're having like, have a libation over here. We're just having a couple of beers, but I do miss him at the Capitol. Yeah. So does he have any aspirations to come back? Would no. You, no? He's done. He's done. Actually, you know what? We're about to say goodnight, so okay. I'm going wow, to gonna thank you, but you're going you're gonna to you're gonna take me out of here tonight, so you're going to say goodnight. Am I Pete Mazzetti? So what do you have coming up with the next couple of guests coming up on Pete Mazzetti's show? Uh, Steve Savino and a whole bunch of other characters throughout the rest of the year. Well, listen, this is uh, Steve signing off for the Pete Mazzetti Show. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you again. Happy holidays, guys.